Let's say you want to get to the top of the Taekwondo world. For many, that would mean becoming an Olympic gold medalist. Now, in order to do that, a lot of things have to go right, starting with you. And I don't mean your effort. Everyone knows that to do anything difficult like earning a gold medal, you have to try hard. But there's a lot more to it than that. Nature can be cruel. Just to give you an example, there's no way that a short, stubby person can ever become an Olympic gold medalist in Taekwondo under the current rule set. The rule set just favors long and lean people. That being the case, you have to be born into the right body. And this is true of every sport. Every sport has an ideal build. So to get to the top, you have to have that ideal build. That's not to say you can't do well without the ideal build, but to get to the absolute top, you have to have the ideal build. From there, you have to find the right trainers, live in the right areas, be exposed to the right people, all of the things that have to go well in order to get to the top in terms of getting a gold medal in Olympic Taekwondo. Now, does that mean that you can't be successful with Taekwondo in some other area? Not at all. Opportunities are endless, and that's the idea of the conversation today. It's that you can become successful without following sort of the standard route, if you will. Now, there's a great book called How to Fail at Everything and Still Win Big. And I'd say the biggest principle of this book is the idea of talent stacking. Now, if you've never heard of this concept, the idea is that you can build skills in all sorts of areas. You don't have to be world class in any of these areas, but that unique stack of skills is what allows you to then become successful. Now, obviously, you can become world class in something and probably do pretty good. You could be a world class singer world-class athlete and people will want to associate with you in some form or another so you'll probably do quite well being world-class but as we just talked about being world-class is extremely difficult and there are certain inevitable barriers just related to genetics that may prevent you from being world-class in any one thing now of course we can try all sorts of different things and we might strike some luck <laughs> and find something that we are world class in but most of us are not so lucky to discover that and so what we have to do instead to be successful is stack our talents now I'll give you an example of what I'm doing right here I am not a world class speaker but I'm talking to you right now I am not a world class videographer I'm not a world class taekwondo athlete I am not a world class comedian or editor but I still put comical videos on YouTube, okay? So what do I have that's unique? Well, I teach Taekwondo, and I teach Taekwondo to mostly average people who are just looking for a self-improvement program. So I've gotten really good at teaching Taekwondo to that specific group of people. Now you take that, add it with some editing skills, some speaking skills, some light comedy, those kinds of things. Again, nothing that I'm world class in, but you mix it all together and you get something that's kind of unique. Taekwondo Guide, there's really not another Taekwondo channel out there like it. So it's a strange concoction of different things that make something that, hey, I'm happy you guys have found appealing. I didn't know if you would or not, but uh, a lot of people have subscribed and interact with the channel, so I can see you guys are, are finding some value here, which is awesome. And that's the other part of the book that is important, which is that you're probably not going to get it right all the time, so you'll constantly be throwing darts at a dartboard, trying to f stack your talents in different ways, try different things, and most of them won't work out. But if you keep throwing darts, eventually you'll find something that sticks. And uh, I've done actually lots of YouTube channels in the past, and this is the first one that stuck. So again, thank you guys for that. Um, but the idea, I think, is really empowering, and you can apply it in all sorts of ways.
Take Taekwondo, for example. What is it in Taekwondo that you can get really good at? Maybe it's not winning a sparring gold medal. Maybe it's not being a world-class Pumse athlete. But maybe you're really good working with kids. And maybe you're the one who can take kids to a high level, something someone else can't do. Maybe you're really good at organizing material and you can write an excellent book about Taekwondo. Maybe you're a generalist and so you're not just good at Taekwondo, but you're good at sort of fusing all sorts of different martial arts together and thus develop a really broad martial arts skill set and then you can teach other Taekwondo people how to do the same. Maybe you teach Taekwondo people how to mix in boxing, for example, and then move into the field of kickboxing. There are so many avenues you can take and become a unique blend of skills that creates a new product and a new service for people. Now, I actually was a professional videographer. I kind of accidentally walked into it back in 2012 or 11. I can't quite remember now. But I uh, always enjoyed making videos. I did it for fun. I went to school for a little while to move into a film program and then decided to pursue martial arts professionally instead. Well, it took me a while to make the martial arts business at all profitable and so I was looking for a side hustle and then people started asking me to make videos for them and so I made various videos and at the time had better equipment. Um, <laughs> right now I just use my phone because uh, it's so good but at the time I, I got some different rigs and so forth and I made quite a few commercial videos for people, did a few weddings, that kind of thing. Um, and my niche there was I wanted to be better than what you could do on your own, so better than your average person could put together a video, um, but not world class. And so what I did was basically I went, I was the cheap guy, <laughs> so I, I sold my work really inexpensively and uh, my product was good, but it wasn't like, you know, someone who would charge three, four times as much and it worked as a really good side hustle for me. It, it served its purpose and it helped me build this skill of uh, working with video. Which again, I have never made myself uh, world class. I know people in my life who are much better with video than I am. Um, but it gave me something to tinker with and I've used it in my, in my martial arts academy, making many different ads for martial arts. I've also put together something called a story card where students get it, uh, they get this card at the beginning of their new rank. So say they start at the school, they get a white belt story card. And the card has scannable QR codes. Some are just videos of the things we work on in class, so they have at-home study material. But there's also a scannable uh, story element to each belt. And so it takes them through this Taekwondo journey, which is based on the Joseph Campbell's uh, hero's journey. And so that's a, another thing. I've studied some Joseph Campbell, some Carl Jung, things like that. And it's like, how can I take these ideas and apply them to Taekwondo? And I did it through this video story system, if you will. Now, again, I am not a world-class storyteller. I don't know Carl Jung and Joseph Campbell as well as many other people in the world. And I'm not the best videographer, but you put all these things together and I don't know of any other martial arts school that has these story cards. It's something unique to my academy here. So I guess what I think would be really neat for you guys is to think of the things that you're naturally drawn to because usually that's the stuff that you're actually genetically gifted, you're predisposed to being good at those things. What are you just naturally drawn to and how can you stack those things together to give yourself a unique selling point. You can use this same concept for martial arts. I love the story of Bill Superfoot Wallace. He, if you don't know, had a early hip failure on one side and so he replaced his hip. I can't remember, I think it was his right hip. And so he could only kick with his other leg. 
And what he did with that was developed a, a different way of fighting than what anyone else had been using at the time. And it's really common now in Taekwondo. It's this sideways fighting stance where you predominantly throw the front leg and you hide behind your lead shoulder so that you're kind of difficult to hit. And he was very difficult to hit. And using this unique approach to kickboxing, I believe he went undefeated. Now, of course, in his case, he figured out how to exploit the rules with the problem that he had, which he turned into an advantage, and created something entirely new that hadn't been done before. So that's always a possibility, is to examine your limitations and then use those to exploit the rule set in your favor. And this may not be something that takes you to the top. Again, I just don't think a short, stubby person can ever get to an Olympic gold medal level in Taekwondo, unless the rules change. But you might get good locally. You know, you might get really good at fighting on the inside using short roundhouse kicks and crescent kicks and those kinds of tools. That might be something that you hone into, and you do well enough to, to be a decent local competitor. Now again, that doesn't mean that you have to go win a gold medal. Maybe being locally good is good enough for you. And maybe that experience makes you an excellent coach. And then maybe you can coach someone to a really high level. Again, the routes to success are nearly infinite. And the ways that you can stack all your skills, that is infinite. So it's really an empowering thing to realize. Have, have any of you done this before? Do you see it in your history? Or is there anything that you're looking to do with this down the road, this sort of unique method of stacking your talents? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you haven't yet, I'd love for you to check out my website, tkdguide.com. What I'm doing there is I've got free Taekwondo video courses. There's one on stances. There is a follow-along exercise routine. And there is a follow-along Tang Sudo form routine that I kind of put together just kind of as a, a practice round, learning how to do follow-along stuff. Uh, but it's good if you're into the Tang Sudo forms or want to add those to what you're already working on. These are the Pyongan forms. And I'll be releasing almost within a week now the new course on the Taegok forms, Taegok 1 through 8. And once again, I'm applying talent stacking to this because, as I said, I'm not the best forms competitor in the world, the best executioner of the techniques. You can pull those people up on YouTube and see people who are better than me. Hands down, no questions. But there's not a lot of content out there for average students. There's a lot of stuff aimed at super high-level athletes, and it can be confusing to newer students, average students. Even like when I was an instructor in two, 2014 is when I switched our school's Pumse curriculum over to the standard. It was difficult to find resources to do that. I had to attend a lot of seminars, travel all over the place, and piece it together. I've put it all in one place as a reference, and I've tried to make the language and method really accessible to people who are just average students. It's broken into six different elements for each form. There is a breakdown of every single technique with clear explanation of how to do them. Then there's transitioning from technique to technique, and I've never seen this done before, even down to where to place your weight from when you're moving from one movement to the next. Then there's a follow along part of the, the course where you can just watch an instructor moving through the forms at a slow speed. I say the word, they do the motion, then you would copy them, and it's facing away from the camera, so it's real easy to follow along with. And then there's a common mistake course, or part of the course, that has just things I see frequently from teaching thousands of classes there's some things that everybody seems to do, and so I highlight those so that you can make sure you're not making those mistakes yourself. Then I also have two types of applications, close range and distance. The close range ones resemble how these movements would be interpreted in Okinawan karate, and the distance ones 
are more your conventional interpretations of the movements. But I spent a lot of time learning how to do those and, and researching what those were. And so it's not something you'll encounter very frequently. And I had to spend a lot of time in karate circles to build this particular skill stack, which is yet another example of talent stacking because I've taken some things that you generally only see in karate that do apply to Taekwondo and I'm sharing them now with the Taekwondo community. So that will be up soon. That one will be for sale and I'll be doing a special promotion on it. So keep your eyes open for that if you're interested. If you're not, please just check out the free stuff. There is some really valuable free stuff on that site there. Yeah, I mentioned the stances, so that's a really good one, um, particularly if you're into Pumse, the course on stances. Thanks again for checking out the video, and please leave a comment on how you've done some talent stacking or what you're planning on doing down the road. Thanks.